talk about, um, okay, no worries. <laughs> Um, so what are we going to cover today? We're going to talk about um, basically why model explanations are needed, basically what the purpose and the, the need is. Um, we're going to introduce the, the concept of SHAP, the history of SHAP, and kind of the, the key concepts behind it. Behind it. We're going to give a brief overview of, uh, uh, we're not going to go too deep into the math of, of SHAP, and, but we're gonna cover at a, at a high level how SHAP works. And then we're gonna do a demo. Uh, the demo is gonna be basically about, um, we're gonna do two different, different use cases. Um, the, the use cases are gonna cover basically a, a tabular implementation with tabular data and, and how SHAP works there. And then we're gonna do a, um, uh, actually really interesting implementation using using image images image data and and basically how how shap can basically take take data from images and and give an explanation on top of it so problems with with current ai models right so the um, kind of kind of the 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 need for for shap and and, and why it's it's important is uh, because um most models, you know, they they might work in aggregate. Where when when a data uh, uh, science project, you know, when when we're kind of building models, you are looking at kind of the the accuracy of the model as a whole and how the model performs. Um, and oftentimes, accuracy alone is not enough to to kind of uh, describe the model. You know, at, at an aggregate level, a model might work. Uh, it might give you know a certain amount of um, accuracy, but um, there might be certain errors happening within your data or certain certain date slices of data that don't fit the bill of your model. Um, you know how do we how do we identify those pockets? Um, and and also if if your model isn't accurate and those those kind of data elements are skipping, um, you know how do we identify you know why it is those those elements aren't kind of um, those, those data points aren't um, uh, working well within your model. And um, so the, the, the problem happens that, especially with, with black box models or, or like, like deep neural network models, as we'll, as we'll discuss, is that um, oftentimes when um, um, basically data, uh, basically the model isn't reflective of ground truth right so um the 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 harm ai can can do is can can basically um you know the the, the core reason is when um the the data that you have it is isn't reflective of some ground truth so there's an example you know a few examples that are listed here is around kind of voice recognition systems where, where they're maybe designed, you know, using data for men, they don't really work as well for, for female users. You have, um, you know, facial recognition software with, you know, for, um, you know, females with darker skin tone where, you know, the, the data might, you know, the, the predictions might work, you know, in aggregate, but for certain types of your population, you know, they don't work as well. So those are more like quality of service, um, you know, type of issues. Uh, there's also harm of allocation type issues where, um, for example, based on the demographic information, there might be kind of, you know, loan, loans that might be denied to certain population because the, 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 the models are using data, demographic data to make a prediction on whether or not to, to kind of, uh, you know, give credit to a person, which, um, you know, maybe, um, you know, not the not the right approach. So um, basically, um, with with glass box models, when we talk about glass box model, um, basically we're talking about linear models where um, you know, basically the the each each kind of feature or variable you know has like a static static impact on the model. You know, so but but true relationships in a model aren't always linear. So, um, you know, effects of a variable can go, you know, up, up and down. It can change based on other factors that are, that are at play in the model. So, um, you know, when we talk about, when we're, when we're building models, um, 
you know, with linear models, they're really easy to interpret, but from an accuracy standpoint, because they're more simpler and they don't really capture relationships between, um, you know, different kind of variables at play, they, they're not as accurate. So even though they're easier to interpret, you, you kind of suffer in terms of accuracy. Um, for, for, for more complex models, like we call them black box models, um, you know, you like, like, you know, deep, uh, uh, kind of deep neural networks, you, you get a lot more accuracy, but it becomes more and more challenging to, to, to kind of understand the, the features that are at play and what, which features kind of lead to the, the prediction that you're making, you know? So the, the, the problem then becomes that, you know, you, you need a simpler explanation for those, um, you know, deep neural networks so that you can, give somewhat of a of a an approximation that is interpretable for the original model um, and and why that model is making the prediction that it's making. So with that we go into to SHAP, right? So SHAP it's uh it's a basically it was introduced by Lloyd Shapley back in 1951 uh, and it's based on game theory. And the the question that it's trying to answer is that you know, how each player impacts a game, right? So you can think about it as like a, like a, like a football game or, or a basketball game. You want to distribute the, the winnings from the outcome of the game to each player. And you're trying to determine how each player impacted the output of the game, it, you know, or another example could be, you know, a restaurant and a bill and, and what each kind of person consumes and the, the bill that comes due, what are the um, kind of, the, the, the cost of the bill, who, who gets to kind of pay for the, for the, the portion of the, the, the food or drinks that each person consume. So um, that's kind of the, the, the core concept. Basically back in 2016, um, the, the concept of Shapley values was, uh, was kind of modified by two researchers, you know, Lundberg and Lee. And basically, they were basically using the game theory uh, behind Shapley values. They um, kind of introduced, um, you know, Shap, Shapley additive explanations, where um, to, to basically explain individual predictions that your model is making. So instead of uh, using, you know, players, you know, the, in, a, in a game, we're basically using features in a, in a coalition to determine their impact on the model. So we're taking the same concepts that, that are there in, um, in Shapley values for, you know, games and players. We're basically shifting those two. In my data set, each player, quote unquote, is actually a feature of that I'm basically inputting into a model. And based on that, I want to determine how much impact that feature has on my outcome. So how does it work? So as I mentioned, each feature acts as a um, kind of a player in a coalition. So what I'm kind of showing here is a, is a data set. You've got three different features. And within those features, what, what basically, and like I said, I'm, I'm basically simplifying this here. Uh, Shapley values and how Shapley values kind of work. There's, uh, there, there's a lot more behind the map, but I'm kind of simplifying it. But basically what um, the, the example that I'm showing here, where you've got basically three separate features, um, Shap basically takes each feature. So in the second box here, we've got feature A, and it basically tries to simulate if this feature was excluded, how would the model perform? Right. So where we're kind of showing here, you know, there's like these little three boxes. It's like kind of simulating there's there's kind of math behind it where it because you can't really run a model, you know, by excluding a feature. The, the implementation that Lundberg and Lee have is they they put like a weighted number for each feature to simulate what Shapley values would look like. And based on that, they run the, the, the explanation or they try to simulate, hey, if this feature was excluded, how it would, you know, uh, what impact would it have on the model? And, um, you know, the, you know, you, they've got a bunch of different explainers, you know, you've got explainers that are, um, you know, there's like a shop kernel explainer, there's uh, 
which is you know for for um, certain types of data they've, they've got explainers that are specifically built for like image data um, in, in our case what we'll primarily be primarily be focusing on is going to be um, the data in um, like a like a tabular format and an image format so we're going to show how Shapley kind of Shap values are going to kind of work on you know basically tabular and image data but there's other like even for image data there's so many explainers that exist you know, we're just going to show one of the explainers uh, in our demo. And um, so steps kind of in a, in a typical kind of um, like a model exercise when you're when you're building a, a shop explanation, basically what we first start off with and, and you know, Johnny will go into more details in the, in the implementation of the code. But first, you start off with actual model that you're building. Right. So when you're building, you know, your your explainer, the first input that goes into the original model you built. Right. Based on that model, then we build we build another model. Like if we have a model F, which is the original, we build another model, which is a model G, which is the explainer model. The explainer model, basically, we feed training data into it. Right. The, the original data that we use to actually build the model, we take that same data and we split it into to, to training and test. The training data data gets fed into kind of build an explainer model. And the explainer model is actually what's building the SHAP values. It's building the SHAP values and it's kind of assigning each feature. Basically, the um, it's assigning each feature. Hey, how much does this feature you know, impact the the, the model and we'll show different kind of visualizations the python implementation of shap the the shap package gives you to actually be able to look at how how each feature is um, you know kind of the different visualizations they show to say hey this feature has has more of a weight you know than this feature they, they assign different kind of numbers to it and then when you test the data when you're testing your predictions it you know we'll, we'll show examples of you know how that that testing is actually um, it, it, you you test your data and you actually test. Hey, what explanation is it giving? Right. So um, the training piece, you, you you start off with the original model, you build the explainer model, you you know you train your data with it, and then you test it by looking at um, you know based on the training that it, that you that you gave it, how well does it perform? Right. So with that. Um, Kind of brief intro we'll kind of go into our demo and like i said there's there's a bunch of different explainers that exist for for shap we're gonna kind of mainly talk about two one is a shap kernel which is mainly used for tabular data and the other one is a shap gradient for imaging data so with that i will kind of turn it over to, to john yeah. thanks ali um yeah. you guys all hear me okay uh, uh, sorry, Janu, just give one second. We got a question. So, um, sorry. Yeah. It's trying to simulate it. It doesn't actually exclude it. It puts like a, a weighted value to, to, to emulate how it will function, you know, to exclude it. Basically, it simulates its exclusion. Okay. So you have different points. Yes. Yes. Right, so so John, uh, the the question was about about this particular slide, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. basically when we're showing that uh, um, uh, a feature is, you know, feature like here, feature A, we're trying to basically simulate the exclusion, and and basically what's the kind of the um, what function is it performing to 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 do the exclusion to simulate that exclusion? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Like Ali said, I think is. You're putting an average value. In fact, what you're putting, in, uh, to be mathematically precise, the expected value to, uh, of the feature is being put, and that that excludes, which is the average value. That is, the, in a probabilistic term, the expected value is fed in, and um, instead of the actual value to, to make it exclude the feature. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jano, I'll let you share share your screen. Um, uh, I don't know if you're able to. Uh, yeah, let me see. Uh, some other screen sharing. Okay, yeah, I'm going to stop your screen sharing now. So. Okay. Yeah. Can you turn the volume up, by the way? Uh, yeah. Uh, from is it on my side or is it on the room side? I think that if you uh, turn it on your end, that it's going to even say that. 
They're getting an echo? No, it's just the volume is is a little bit low. Um, yeah, so if you just uh, the, you know, turn off your speaker system, I think you should be able to turn it off. And I assume it's like your speaker system already since it's coming. Yeah, out. my speakers are already at full volume. Oh, they're full volume. Yeah, I think it might be the. Okay. Hey, uh, Johnny, can you um, speak? Okay. Oh, is is my voice coming through, or is that is that low? Is that? I think uh, your your voice is coming a little bit lower. Okay. Uh, I'll try to speak a little louder. I think. I mean, I'm close to the computer. Um. <clears throat> so, uh, let me know if you guys can't hear me, and I will try to speak louder, <laughs> as loud as I can. I mean. I think my mics are turned on, but everything's, uh, I'm not sure what the issue is, but um, Holly, how is it? Is it still pretty bad or how is it? Uh, it's a little bit, a little bit low, but, um, but you can, you can go, we'll, we'll kind of look into it, but you okay. can, you can continue. So like Ali said, so, I mean, I'll go back to Ali's, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the figure. So the shaft value, the, um, the way it calculates it, you need to build a original model using training data. And then um, we, um, we test it, we test it for accuracy and so on and so forth. Then we um, feed that original model and, and the training data into the Shapley model, in, into the explainer um, to build an explainer model. And this explainer model is what we will use to, uh, you know, Compute the shaft values and and explain the explain the prediction. So <clears throat> now we'll go into a actual example. We're going to take two examples, and the both of them are relatively simple. And the first one is very simple, and it's been deliberately uh, chosen like that because then you guys can really understand what's going on behind the scenes. Because shaft is a bit complex concept. So we've chosen some very simple examples to explain this. And maybe in a su subsequent talk, we may do some additional examples. So the first two examples are very simple. And the first one um, is, is called the IRIS data set. I think some of you guys may be familiar with it. This is a data set of uh, flowers. So, uh, it is what is called the iris flowers. They, um, the original problem was to classify these iris flowers into four subspecies using uh, four features. So um, you, you know, there was a botanist who measured the sepal length, the sepal width, the petal length, and petal width. And there are, um, there are uh, three subspecies that, that need, we need to classify this into. So the whole classification, which is a very simple problem in, in a classic ML problem is to use these four features to classify this into three uh, different subspecies, which will just be labeled zero, one, and two for our, for our uh, this one. So, so this is the iris data set, which is actually in a part of SHAP. So you can just load it from SHAP itself. Um, and here we're just installing SHAP um, in, in, in the system. Um, and this is IPython notebook. And then you uh, load the SHAP data set uh, in the IRIS data set directly from SHAP because it's part of part of the SHAP data sets. It's available. So this is the data sets. Um, you know, um, it's I think 120, uh, 150, um, 150 records, 50 for each species. So there are three species and 50 records for each species. So, um, so we wrote a lot of this test and here we are splitting it into train and test. So we put 80% into the training set and 20% into the test set. That's what we're doing right here. Um, and which, in which case you come up with 120 for training and 30 for testing. So that's what you're doing. So we do the train and test thing. And then this is actually the, accuracy function we are defining how to test the accuracy. Um, and the actual classifier we're using is called the 
a KNN or K neighbors, which just uses the closest neighbors, the K neighbors to classify, classify every point. So if, if the neighbors, all your neighbors are a particular species, you know, zero, then you will likely be classified into zero. This is a very common classifier that everybody uses in ML. So we are using that. Um, so we start this KN neighbor classifier and we, then we pass it the train set, train X train, which is the features. And this is the, these are the labels zero, which are zero, one, two, the Y train. Um, so this is a K neighbor classifier. Then we do the accuracy prediction. Um, and of course, it's such a simple model. The accuracy comes out very high, 96%. Um, so here, is the, here are the actual predictions. We're just showing you the prediction. So which is saying uh, for, for the test, which is about um, 30 set, 30 data points, these are the predictions which is two, one, zero means uh, two is one species, one is and zero and so on and so forth. So these are the predictions. And this is uh, another way to look at the prediction, which is what is called a categorical way. The actual predictions come out as a probability. It is a probability that this particular record belongs to one of the categories. So here the categories are actually zero, one, two. So this could be a little confusing, so I will, Try to explain it a little bit. So the way the thing comes out is it, either this record belongs to zero, one, or two. So the, the prediction is, what is the probability that this belongs to zero, either to zero, one, or two? So that's how the predictions come out. So in the first record, if you see that this, it is predicting that this is belonging to two because there is a one in this column. And the actual, yeah, so that, that's what this two corresponds to as well. So in this case, it's, it's predicting that it belongs to one and so on and so forth, okay? And some of them, it, it, it could be less than one. So this is 0 0.2.8, which means there's 80% chance that this is a two and 20% chance that this is a one. And we would round it off and that this would prediction would be going to become a two as it is. So that's how this, these predictions work. And some of them are more, like I said, this one is almost equal, so which is more of a problem. So, but most of them are pretty certain in terms of prediction. So um, now, now we'll do the explainer. So now we want to see why do these predictions uh, come, the, come out the way they did. And what we are going to do is, this is the kernel explainer. So what we do is these probabilities that, that are passed in, we pass these probabilities to our kernel explainer. So that's what we are doing. We pass the probability to, this is the trained model, KNN model with the, with the predicted probability. We pass it to the explainer and we pass it the training set. And that's how we build the explainer. Um, and this is, this is where we train the explainer, okay? Now, once this is trained, now we can look at the um, look at what what why why it explains how it explains each each particular prediction. So now we are saying explain tell us how you explain the first prediction, which is the, this one. This this prediction, the first first record. Tell us how you explain this prediction. Okay, um, and so how it looks, it it, it makes a plot like this. Okay, which is a, which could be a little confusing, and I'll try to explain it to you. Um, so what it does is it tells us it makes this plot, and it it for each of the features it gives a value. Um, so the the and what what it will tell you is that the it will tell you how the prediction differs from the base value. So the base value of a prediction for this is actually 0.3 three to five, which is actually one third. So what, what it means is because there are three categories, basically the base average value of prediction is almost one third. So it could be one third for each of the categories. So this is gonna tell us why, how this, uh, this particular record differs from the base value of 0.3. Um, that's what this explain is trying to do. So what it does, it makes a graph like this, which is, 
here is the base value, which is about 0.3, okay? And the actual prediction for this is actually zero. So it is trying to predict this column. So it's actually the prediction is zero. So it's gonna tell you how did I come up with the prediction zero? So what it does, it takes 0.3 and then for each of the speeches, it is subtracting a number. So it is for this, um, and it, it, it'll be clearer in the bottom figure. It's, it's actually telling you that this particular, so from 0.3, it, take, it subtract this number, this number, and this number, and goes all the way to zero. That's what it's saying. And this first, the biggest one will, will turn out to be pedal length. I don't know if you can see this. this. The biggest contribution to this prediction is pedal length. And it's harder to see here. It'll be easier to see in the next video. So this is for one prediction. Now, what let's let's do uh, all the predictions at the same time. So what we uh, we take the kernel explainer. Now we do the same thing and pass the whole test set, whole test set, which is about thirty values. Okay. So then it comes out with something like this. Okay. And actually, I'll or by maybe output value. Let's try that. Okay. So this is again a little complex to explain, and I'll try to explain. So what it's saying is, so some of these predictions have value one, right? Which means probability one. And some of these predictions have value zero. So it is telling you, and they all start with the average prediction of 0 0.325, okay? So it is telling you, how did I come up for each of these samples, 30 samples, how did I come up with the either one or zero? And which feature was most important? So if you look at these, uh, these uh, numbers, which are have all been to one. So it says I started with oh, 0.3, and then I added pedal width, which which gave me a contribution like this, which is very very small, if you guys can see here. Okay, and and uh, I think then it was uh, pedal pedal. I think the second one is I think pedal uh, uh, sepal width or something like that. But the the main point is this biggest contribution right here. If you see, is pedal length. So it's saying to arrive at one, the biggest contribution is pedal length, okay? Um, for, to arrive at one prediction. And, and now look at blue. The blues mean, red means positive contribution and the blue means negative contribution. So for blue, again, I started with 0.3, which is the average value. And then um, actually almost, you don't even see any other feature. Almost every other feature is zeroed out. So the main contribution is from pedal length, okay? And there is like a very minor, you know, it's hard to see even there is very minor uh, thing at the top from other features. So it's saying all the contributions was from pedal length and it, which where it arrives at zero, okay? And this is the way to look at all these predictions and you can sort them by different better. So it says you can sort these by similarity. You know, this is how similar the samples are. You just different ways of looking at the same output. And here also you see the same thing. The pedal length is the, you know, is the highest one. You can sort these by um, just the pedal length itself, okay? Uh, which means if the pedal length was small, what is the contribution? Pedal length is high of the contribution. In all these cases, it, what it's saying is the biggest contribution is from pedal length and everything else is of very minute, minuscule contribution. So maybe Ali, I will pause here because this is really important. See if there are any questions. If this is this part is clear or not, um, because that's a lot of information right here. Ali, um, any any questions on the core of the implementation so far? Um, nothing so far. Okay, um, it's all clear. Wow, it's all clear. Okay. I, I thought this would be confusing. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so now, so, so the thing to remember, yeah, is that, you know, these, uh, what we feed into SHAP is the probability, which are between zero and one. And the SHAP tells you how it arrived at those probabilities, how it pushed, put it to zero or put it to one. So, that's the main, uh, that's how the SHAP, SHAP thing works. So the SHAP model works. And that may be a little confusing at a point, but once you get used to it, it's, it's pretty easy. So, um, 
And if later people want to come back to this and want me to explain this further, I can, I can explain it. But um, so the blues are negative and the uh, red is positive. And you have to look at the absolute value of whether it's the, you know, um, which is the biggest contribution, biggest positive or biggest negative contribution. And that's the feature that you need to focus on. So from all this, you can see that the pedal length is the biggest contributor of, uh, you know, um, uh, of the prediction. So, so now, now, now we're going to use this to see, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, which, which part of the model goes wrong and why, and can we use SHAP to uh, understand that? Okay. So I'm going to skip a little bit ahead. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip this part because we're to get, um, you know, but what we do is basically the setup is we, we put all the predictions and we put the actual labels and then compare them and to see which one is correct and which one is wrong. Okay. So that's what we're doing. So in these 30 uh, records, we, we are checking to see whether the prediction is true or false. So that's, that's, that's what we are seeing. And, um, I will skip ahead a little bit because we change the parameters a little bit. Okay, um, for, for it to make more sense here. So we did a second test here with a slightly different one. Okay. So here again, um, if we're doing the same thing, we're looking at which 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 of the models uh, where the model comes, um, you know, is wrong and which of the models is correct, and then. We look at, let us look at which, which records the model came out wrong and why. Can we explain, use SHAP to explain this? So let me go down. So if, what this thing is saying is that this bracket in here is saying that, oh, uh, where is the accuracy wrong? Show me the records where the accuracy is uh, wrong. Where they, see, where all, all of these are false. So these are the four records, okay? Where all where we had false prediction, and now, now this is where the original model got it wrong, right? Yeah, original the model, original got it model wrong. that we built it got these four incorrect, in, in incorrectly. And now, can we look at uh, the uh, you know, uh, can we look at uh, in the patterns to see what it is wrong? First thing we do not, you know, from SHAP we know that the main thing to focus is we don't look at all these features. We know that the main thing that drives the model prediction is only the pedal length. Okay. Now, so, in the in the previous example, when you showed the pedal length, that yeah. was you showed a global impact, right? Like you showed globally, pedal length has the most impact on yeah. the model as a whole. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. and and now we're looking at for individual predictions where where things were wrong. Yeah. To see what what impacted those incorrect predictions yeah and what was the model which feature the model was using yeah and, and kind of where, where it got something wrong yeah yeah so so shap is telling you look at the pedal and focus on the pedal and because that's what drives drives the prediction so we can see that you know they seem to be in a narrow range 4.7 to apply 5.1 but why would this be that why does the model get it get it wrong here here so we did dig a little bit deeper, okay? But the SHAP is guiding you, telling you don't look at all these other features, only look at the pedal length feature because that's the most important thing. So um, the, that's, that, that's how it's helping you. Um, so if you, if we can look at like, what are the range of different features in the pedal length, if you see actually the pedal length, the, the minimum is uh, one and the maximum goes to, all the way up to 6.3, okay? And these are the, uh, uh, you know, standard deviation and so on and so forth. That's, that's what it is. Um, right. And if you want to look at, um, actually we, uh, we'll skip ahead. The easiest way to look at it is do a diagram. So let's look at each, uh, the, each category, zero, one, and two, and look at what the pedal length was for those, those pieces. Hey, uh, Jano, real, real quick, can you make your screen full screen? I think it was one of the comments about. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Um, hold on. Is that better? Yes, thank you. So now this is actually we are plotting the three, um, the three, um, 
the three uh, uh, subspecies. So this is just plotting the parallel length on the x on the y axis, and this is uh, species subspecies zero, subspecies one, and subspecies two. Okay, so this is the distribution of features how they look. Okay, so uh, actually, yeah, this this one. Um, you can see that the problem is here. Actually, it'll be even better here. So this box plot is actually really good. So, so now you can see zero, one, and two. Zero is way down here in the in the pedal and space. So that doesn't really cause any problem. The problem is between one and two. Okay, and if you can see the the bar plot, which means that this is the core where, where the core is, and but the the one goes all the way up to five point one. Okay. Um, and goes all the way down to 3.2 or something like that, okay? And two- so Just just to real quick, uh, Dara, this is, we're looking at now one, one incorrect prediction, right? We're looking at one prediction that was incorrect and we're looking at details of that or are we, are we no, looking no, no. at- uh, We are looking, we are trying to explain why these four predictions came out wrong, okay? These. Mm -hmm. Is these four were wrong. All of these were false. And you can see that the pedal length was between 4.7, uh, 4.5 and 5.1. Now mm -hmm. we are trying to dig into the data to see why that is, why, why is that true? Okay, that's what you're doing. So here, this one is just a, a box plot of the whole data. So yeah. this is for the whole data and the range of- Range the of different, different- for, for each of the species. Yeah, yeah. And where the boundaries are. So the, the, so the model is based, uh, uh, because pedal length is the main feature. So what it's saying is that model is, is easier, easiest to model for it to identify zero because it's way down there, the pedal length, okay? But one and two are very close, okay? So one and two, the, mm, this one, th this goes all the way up to 5.1. And here are the two, Oh, the need of it is that it starts at five, but it also goes all the way up to 4.5, okay? So what it's say, telling you that the, uh, that the confusing part is right between here, 4.5 and 5.1. Um, and I don't know if I, let me see if I can annotate. Okay, so, so right here, you guys see that? So that's where the overlap is. Um, so, in, when the pedal length is between this value, 4.5, and between 5.1, this is where the confusion arises. Um, so that's what, and if you can go back so and- just, just a point over here. So in this case, for we, had a, we have 100 samples, right? Yeah. Um, and in those samples, Sharp is basically saying, across the board, pedal length is the feature we should look at. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So in this case, for the ones that it got correct and the ones for the ones it got incorrect, mm -hmm. it's also saying pedal length is the most important feature. Important feature. Yeah. The, the problem in these in these cases is that where, where it gets it wrong, the pedal length between these two species is very close. Yeah. On average. And yeah. gets it wrong. Yeah. Now, in other more complicated sets, the yeah. The features, the the samples that it gets wrong, it may not have used, you know, pedal length as a feature, right? So if pedal length is feature X and you got, you know, 10 values incorrect, mm -hmm. Chad may also kind of uncover that, hey, for you know, 90% it's using, you know, pedal length or feature X, but for the ones that it got wrong, it's mm -hmm. using, you know, feature Y. It's not using, you know, um, pedal length as the as the driver yeah but in this case you know it it's using um we know that both for for the ones that got right and the ones that got wrong pedal length is the key driver yeah in both yeah. the cases yeah yeah in a different example it could be different and you could dig in using chat but this right. is and i think one of, one of the key things was um the difference between kind of global and and local predictions right yeah. so when we and and kind of you can add more here, John, from from mm -hmm. your experience. The way I understand it, there are ways to to currently without SHAP look at what features globally impact a model's performance. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So there are ways to see if you're doing like customer churn and you're looking at a hundred features, mm. there are ways that the model, there are features, things other than chat that can tell you globally, hey, how, what, what impact is, is impacting churn on, on a million customers? What's the feature that has the most impact? Yeah. What I think what we're showing here is that it's not, it's, it, we can go into these four specific samples, right? Or you can go into an X, one individual sample and you yeah. can see for that individual sample, what features had an impact, yeah. right? Because yeah. the model may impact the global population as a whole. It, 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 you may use, you know, things other than chat to tell you, hey, what features are driving it? But when it comes to individual predictions, right? The, the features that are driving an individual prediction may be different, right? Yeah. It, it's, not, it's not linear, right? That's what we were showing with glass box and black, spot, black box models. With mm -hmm. linear models, a feature generally has like a static weight on, mm -hmm. on every sample that you input. Mm -hmm. With you know, deep neural networks and, and other more complicated model, depending on what the other features are, yeah. what is, you know, the, the impact of for, for one prediction may be different. And that's where like SHAP, that, that local, you know, we, that, that's what we're, the, the verbiage is, you know, global mm -hmm. impact of a feature and local impact for one sample and being able to tell you, I think that's really kind of like interesting or unique. And there's other things like Lime as well that, mm -hmm. that you know, use, can, can tell you locally, but mm -hmm. SHAP can do both. It can do yeah. you know, global and it can do local that, hey, for one particular sample, hey, what's the features that are impacting it. So yeah. in, in my mind, this is not, like I said, this is just a like an exercise we did with, with data that comes with the SHAP package, right? Yeah. But if you're talking about customer churn or other cases where you, know, you wanna see a, one segment of the population, what features are driving you know, decisions by a certain feature of the, a certain segment of the population, being able to narrow in on that, right? Yeah. Within, within the context of your broader model, you know, mm -hmm. being able to have an explainer model that tells you, hey, for this segment of, of my kind of training data or test data, really the, the model can tell you when features that are impacting the, the results are different than, you know, the, 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 global, the global values, right? I think in those cases, it can really, in, in my view, you know, that ability to go down to the local sample can, can kind of uncover more. In this example, like I said, it's, the pedal length is is the the feature it's impacting for everything, right? Yeah. But um, so just wanted to wanted to kind of call that out if it wasn't wasn't kind of clear. Yeah, that's a good good point. I think yeah, that's the feature that's the important of SHAP. It can do local and global and in a consistent way that it doesn't the values are consistent and it doesn't get confused. So the uh, mathematically there are three. Uh, there are three or four properties which have to be, um, you know, um, which have to be true for it to be consistent, and in that that's that's the beauty of SHAP. So a uh, good point, Ali. I think. Um, so, shall I continue on that? So this this particular image that we're looking at right now. So the question and it was like, are we looking at each one sample? No, this is looking at this for in the previous chart we saw that it told us that pedal length was the main driver, right? It told us globally. Now we're looking at, we, now we know that, you know, pedal length is what we need to look at. And we're looking at for the whole population, what's the average, you know, for uh, the, the pedal length for species, you know, zero, one, and two. So this is still not at the local level. This is still at the, at the global level. And we're just doing like data profiling at the, at the global level. But SHAP at the global level told us that feature um, of, of pedal length is the most important. Now, I think over here, I think what, what John, what you're showing is hmm. that this blue line, if, if you go at the very yeah, top, yeah, yeah. This that was, was one prediction. This, this is for a single, single. This is for single. a single prediction, yeah, yeah. right? So once again, in this sample data, pedal length is a driver across the board, right? Even in this one, this pedal length is actually, you know, the, the, the biggest impacted value, right? Mm -hmm. But- um, And also global, so it's the same everywhere. The fact that it can go, it can go local and it can go global. You can do, see what 
what's what's being impacted, what features are impacting one prediction, and overall, what's the what features are driving your model. Okay, the, the definition of local uh, can be uh, just a one unique sample, that's it. Yes. Or it can be something that you just named a, a specific customer segment or a domain or a group of whatever demographic yeah. or. That. Yes, yes. So, uh, you find that as a data set so that the chef can look into and can generate that um, that are the most impactful feature for that particular group. So, so in, in this case, I'll just say in this case, or when we Ali, showed can you the examples, back the question for all of looked us? at the things that were incorrect, right? Yeah. Where the model got it wrong. That told us, hey, the model's not working here. So let's look at these cases that it's getting it wrong. Does it diverge from the 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 is the model looking at the wrong features to make a prediction, right? But I'll kind of rephrase for for Janu for the for the question. Okay. The the question is Janu that the way I was was describing it earlier when we say local we could mean like one individual sample, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we could mean like a subset of samples, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if we have you know a hundred you know hundred uh, our, our our samples in our whole data set. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, maybe we want to look at 20, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. how, you know, 20 samples are, um, like what are the most important features for these 20 samples? Yeah. The yeah. question that that Don was asking is, how do you input that into your, um, in, into, into the SHAP values where you say that, hey, I want to look at the most important features for these X amount of samples. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's very easy. I think you just, uh, you know, I will show you what, or let me show the code where it is. Um, yeah, it just where you feed in. So the this thing, so you build the explainer and now you want to compute the SAP value. So you just feed it in. So here I'm just feeding in the first, first um, in, um, record. So I, you know, X test is just saying that, okay, the first record, zero to record, uh, come, tell me the shaft values of this and, and plot that shaft values of this. That's what it's saying, okay? So if you wanted the first five records, I would just change this to zero to five, like that. So is that, that simple. Is that clear, Ali? Yeah, I think uh, what you're, what you're- So this one is, uh, it's correct. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, you just want to look at the, uh, the 20 samples mm -hmm. through that I lock. And yeah. say, like, but you, because you mentioned something about looking at a specific segment, customer segment, uh, or specific demographic segment, or specific business domains, how do you define that in the you have to so, categorize yeah, so I think when you when you build the model, when you build the model and build the explainer, it's telling you for it it creates it's telling you for everything, right? For that for the whole population, it's giving you an explanation for one of them, for five of them, for for twenty of them, it's giving you like one answer that hey, I think for th these hundred features, I think these are for this sample zero, sample one, sample two, three, four, five, for each individual one, it's giving it an assignment, right? That these are the most important. Now, in terms of, I think what you're what you're saying is how do you um, how do you identify like a certain kind of segment of your population, yeah, right? Because that is a super super useful. Right, right. <laughs> like the the, the the age of 40 to 50s when they're shopping behavior, and they're right, right. the age of 60 to 70 years old. That's a super thing. You can yeah. explain that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess that would be in your in your original kind of training data, right? Like so if um so I guess the 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 question is if you have like a certain kind of example I gave was um with the within a certain kind of 
segment of the population mm -hmm. if in the explainer that the way you're defining it right mm -hmm. is there any way to i guess add more kind of filtering here to 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 specify which sample you want to look at or which sample you want to see the features for i guess is that the the right way to ask the question mm. Yeah, you build the whole explainer, then you pass it whatever sample you want. You, you can subset it, you know, say you want a certain age, whatever. Just uh, find from the whole test set, find that subset that you're interested in, you know, you, you, you just have to, you know, by, I don't know, whatever condition you want to put, you know, like that X test with, you know, if this is age or whatever, you know, X test with age greater than, I'm just making this up, you know, age greater than five or whatever, you know, something like that. So you build the test set that you want and then pass it to the explainer or uh, the explainer and it will it'll show you the shaft values for that and then you can look at the plot of that i don't know if that answered the question that makes sense that makes sense yes okay yeah, because you, you can just build the, the sample that based on certain criteria like some column data some column elements yeah. Great. Any other questions? Okay. You can continue on your uh, on the yeah. on the next one. Um, so I think that's the this is a very simple example. This gives you like the basic. Uh, I think it's a good thing for people to look at and run because this is you will get the idea of SHAP really well, you know, and how to use it. Then you can try some complicated examples. Like I said, you know. Um, we looked at how to explain this and we were able to explain why this model was wrong, you know, for that. And actually we tried it with other models, not uh, S, you know, KNN, SVC. I won't go into that, but all of that, the, the results are pretty much the same. So, um, you know, this pedal length is what drives everything. So, but it's very easy to do for any other model. So. At this point, we will now skip to the second data set as we are running a little bit, uh, you know, behind time. Um, Ali, you want to introduce this? Yeah. Data set? So this this example was tabular data, as we saw. You know, you it, it, and it used the SHAP kernel explainer. The second example is actually with image data, and the image data is actually um, basically when when a patient goes into to 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 see a, a doctor for a lab result. There's oftentimes, you know, cases in, in my family, like they give you a contrast to drink. That contrast basically kind of coats your organs and it gives like uh, the, the, the machine like a better resolution and, and better ability to see, you know, certain parts of your organs. So this data is actually from um, patients that were given a contrast to drink and it was a scan of their lungs. And the image is split out into to kind of two categories, one where a patient had the contrast and what that image looked like, and one that didn't have a contrast and what that image looked like. So the explainer, what it's gonna to try to determine is very simple. There's no like healthcare implications of it, but it's very simple like, hey, the model's gonna, the, the original model is gonna to try to predict, hey, did the image have a contrast in it or not, right? Can, can the model distinguish from the images we feed into it that, hey, this patient had contrast or, or not. And the second thing we're gonna show with image data, the, the gradient explainer, how SHAP can tell you which areas of the image and, and the, the, the sections of where it saw, you know, contrast or it didn't see contrast, where it tries to determine that, hey, like, you know, I'm saying this has contrast because I see stuff in this area, right? That's kind of the, it's, 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 um, it's like a simple image, right? But, you know, the, the, the SHAP, it's just to show the, the functionality of SHAP on image data using the gradient explainer. Okay. <coughs> okay, Ali, I can take over? Mm -hmm. Yep, go ahead, John. Mm -hmm. So like Ali said, I think the now we're going into image data and image data actually is being used in many places now. Um, you know, we, we just want to see a show a simple example, but it's used in like cancer detection, breast cancer detection, and so on and so forth. And um, 
we may do this in some subsequent talks, but this is a very simple example to show that SHAP can work with image data and where we're doing this contrast, no contrasting. So, um, and Johnny, you can you can also go into the, the the performance implications of of you know the the, the examples where mm -hmm. where you work with you know image data and kind of the the limitations that, that <coughs> come with within the, yeah. the implementation of SHAP with, with large data sets. Yeah, yeah. Um, just as a preface, I think the image data will is more complicated, takes more processing power and more memory, and this particular data set, we work with only um, 100 images, but when you feed it a larger set of images, like well, we tried another uh, set with like 1,000 images, then we get into a problem. Now, uh, SHAP inherently takes up a lot of uh, both memory and processing power, okay? The, the way the computation works is, is very complicated, and it is doing a lot of permutation, what is called the coalition, building a lot of coalitions behind the, the computation. So it, it runs very slow and also takes up a lot of memory. And in fact, we were surprised that when I ran with a large data set, um, it crashed. The first time I saw that the, my Google Collab crashed um, several times and we were forced to adjust and reduce the data sets. And the, so that's an inherent issue with SHAP, with image data and with large data sets. So, just as a preface, something you need to keep in mind when you're working with image data. A more complex, more processing power and more memory you need. Um, so with, the, with that preface, now we let's go into the, um, the, the code, okay. Um, so first we'll load the data set, which is like I said, 100 images um, from, from the drive. And this is on a Google Drive. Uh, and we, again, like using Google Collab is a great resource to use. I don't know, probably most people are familiar with it um, because it has or comes with all the uh, uh, you know, libraries loaded in and especially we need TensorFlow here uh, for image data and the Google Collab has all, all the TensorFlow loaded in. So it's very easy to use that way. So we highly recommend Google Collab for this kind of analysis. So we, we really, uh, we read in, sorry about that, we read in 100 images and we read in a file called overview or .csv, which describes these 100 images, okay? So there is 100 images and um, like uh, Ali said, some of these have contracts and some of these have no contract. So I'm looking at the first three images. So these are images of patients with a various, you know, um, they have certain age, and they're either contrast or no contrast. Um, and these are, are different, you know, um, uh, different um, aspects of the image and these are DCM files, okay? So, um, and this is actually loading the images. There's a lot, of, these are the 100 images that are loaded in into the data set. Uh, so we will look at just briefly at like what what the data set looks like, the EDA of it, and then we'll go into the uh, prediction side of it. Okay. Um, like I said, 100 images which have age um, is one of the uh, distinguishing characteristics, different age. And uh, um, so we're gonna look at the distribution of ages just for, um, just to explore a little bit. So this is what the whole uh, images look like. There are 100 images, and most of the images fall between this 60 and 80. You know, that's that's where the uh, the scans are coming from for the lungs. Okay. Um, and then we're going to look at so between contrast and no contrast. You know, the the distribution of images when there is a this is contrast equal to zero and contrast equal to one. And you can see the distribution is a little bit different here. These are more spread out. And the one with contrast is mostly all between 60 and 80, okay? And I don't know, there's some, must be some medical reason for this, but I'm not aware of it. So, um, so that's just some exploratory data analysis that you can look at, you know, um, and this is just plotting both of them together. So um, anyway, now let's get into the uh, prediction part of it. So, um, so actually this is showing the first image. This is what the image looks like. This is the first image out of the 100. 
and this one is um, has contrast. And Ali, do you want to say anything about the contrast here or anything? Yeah, the the stuff with the green, the 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 green highlighted areas, you know, that's kind of tells you where the where where the contrast. So these are obviously these are cases where with the human eye we can kind of validate what the model is telling us, right? So there there are other cases that we're not kind of showing in this talk. It's a lot more um, challenging when you as a human cannot tell why the model made the prediction. If the model gets it right or wrong, we can just probably look at the image and we can say, hey, you know, there's green stuff in here. Probably there was contrast. So this is a little bit of an easier example to, to understand because visually we can tell. Um, in other cases, another example, which we're, we're not gonna cover, but the one we were saying with the thousand images we tested, um, some cases the model uses pieces of the image to make a prediction. And intuitively you cannot tell one way or another why it made a prediction. Now, could it be that there it's, it's looking at some ground truth, which, you know, which we don't see, but the model sees, you know, you would need a, in case of MRI images, you would need a doctor to kind of tell you that, right? Get that no, hey, the model is looking here. If I look deeper, I'll find something there, right? As opposed to, uh, Point being that even when you have explainers, when especially with the, looking at the human eye can't distinguish, you need further explanations to do analysis on the data. In this case, it's fairly simple. We can look at the image. We can tell, looking at the kind of the green highlighted areas, that yes, there's there's contrast there. Okay. Thank you, Ali. Let me go down um, now. Um, so what we do first is up or this train and test split, as I say, you know. So we have 100 images, we split it into test and train, okay? Um, and with a 0.1 this thing. So which means we're gonna take 10% or to test for testing and 90% for training. So 90 of the images will become uh, the train set and 10 of them will go to test it. So, so this is actually the test set. Uh, and one zero, one zero, which is actually, so means contrast, one means contrast, no contrast, contrast, and so on and so forth. So that, that's what this is saying. Um, so this is how the test and train sets look like. Now, um, now we're gonna get the, uh, get the, um, in with the data ready for, to feed into the model. And we will have to do some little bit of manipulation. And I'll show you what, okay. Two things we have to do. One is um, the image or data has values, I think integer values. I think they're between zero and 256, I believe. So, but the model uh, the, the doesn't like that. It wants values between zero and one. So, so we do a simple transformation to do that. And that's what we are doing here. So what we do is we take the maximum of the, uh, of the whole data set, okay? Well, which is a which is saying a black and white value, and we divide it by each of them by the maximum value. So which makes which which makes it between zero and one. So it's just a simple transformation, but we need it for how the uh, you know to feed it into the model. So we convert here. We've converted all the values between two, zero, and one. Okay. So as you can see, the maximum value is one now. Okay. Um, now. Uh, the other thing we need to do is, this is a little confusing and or, you know, we will, I will spend some time on it, is we have to change the labels. So labels were like this, zero and one like this. We have to change it into a categorical um, uh, value because that's how the model wants it. And categorical value is similar to what we had in the Iris data set. Means it, you have to code it like saying that it, it's either, Either it belongs to category A or category B. And here the two categories are contrast and no contrast. So we will convert this zero one value into a double column value. And you will see what happens in between, you know, how they look like, you know, further down. But I'm just telling you that because all, it always likes a categorical, uh, um, you know, way of inputting the labels and we need to transform it. That's what we're doing right here. Um, so once we've done these transformations, they transform the input into zero and one and the, the, the labels in, into category, then we are ready for uh, to feed it into the data set. Um, 
and we are going to use this uh, Keras, which is based on TensorFlow. Um, so that's why you need TensorFlow and Keras, and we're using this model called Sequential, uh, and which is a neural 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 network model. Uh, it's a convolution network. Um, if you want later, we can give you the details. It's a convolution network with two hidden layers of five and five, and this is the actual uh, the the network or the structure of the network. Um, um, two layers of five and five, and an input and an output layer. Okay. So here we are specifying how the, the neural network it looks like. Okay. Um, and this is a very common uh, format for our configuration for a, a image in, image classification. Uh, this way, uh, sequential model with this kind of configuration. So, and then also this is this is what it, this is it showing you what the model summary is. We have set up the model. It's a sequential model, but we, these are the parameters for it. Okay. Um, um, and the uh, accuracy we're going to use is called the cross uh, categorical cross entropy accuracy. So here is where we start the frame. So we, the the 90, 90 images we've support uh, we've uh, separated to train. We are feeding it in here. We have set up the model. Now you say model not fit. Uh, pass the ninety images and the labels in here. Set the batch size and epochs. This is telling you how long you are, you wanted to train, and you can set it to like hundred epochs, forty epochs, whatever. Okay, and then we hit train, and this is where it starts to train. And to warn you, it takes quite a bit of time. So, um, actually, I had to stop it in between. It took like 15, 20, 15 to half an hour to train train these models. Okay, depending on how accurate you want it to be. So one trick is to act, uh, uh, I will show you is to train it once and save it, and that's what we're going to do here. So once we've trained it, and maybe it took a half an hour, one hour, whatever. Okay, you don't want to redo this process again because it, you know, you, you want to change something else, you want to try some other thing, but you don't want to retrain the model because it takes a long time. So what we do is we use this thing called pickle. Okay, so whatever model you. Uh, you know, um, train, you can just dump it. You can take the pickle model, pickle, and dump the model into a file, into a binary file. Okay. And this is, it was written into this. So this is very handy. Um, some of you may be familiar with it, and some of you not. And at any point later, you can just load that file and the model will come fully trained with all the parameters. You don't have to do anything. So, and this is where I'm doing now. And I trained this model and then I came back, you know, after one hour, you know, I can just load that, load the file, you know. So I'm loading the file and um, this is the model 2221, which is identical to the model, okay. Uh, actually, I'm just comparing the two models. Look at the accuracy of the, this is the original model and look at the accuracy of the 21, which is the loaded model and they're the same. It's about 0 0.9, 0 0.9 accuracy. So, um, so now we can use, yeah, the, the saved model to do predict predictions. So, so now the saved model we are using to prediction the the ten. We have ten images that we are trying to predict. Okay, um, the, whether they have contrast and no contrast. So again, this is a little confusing. So that's why you know I will spend a few minutes here. So the predictions look like this, and uh, maybe any of you can tell me if this is confusing or not confusing. So the prediction is actually a probability. Um, uh, that this particular row belongs to either no, the no contrast or it belongs to contrast. So I will annotate here. So the um, so this is th these are the two labels, and each of the prediction value is telling you that okay, this is telling you this particular row is telling you there's point nine point nine uh, nine nine uh, um, probability that this has no contrast and only a 0.01 probability that is this has contrast. So that's what this is telling you. And some of these other ones are almost zero and ones. And some of them, this number three, if you see, it's almost 50-50. So number three is a little bit of a problem because this says it's almost 57% here and 43% here. So what it's saying is I'm not so clear about which the prediction is, whether it's a contrast or no contrast. And um, so that's how the predictions come out to be. Uh, 
just just to clarify, so if it's 0.57 is no contrast, it'll mark it as no contrast if as long as the probability is greater than the, the 50%. Yeah, yeah. So you are you'll round it up. You'll round, round, round it up. So it will be marked as no contrast, but it's telling you that uh that I am, you, you know, it is a model is a little confused here. So that's you know, that's what it's saying. So um and you can here is the so actual these, are, these 10 examples you're showing are the test set that you're yeah. you're, you're, you're you've already trained it on the on the 90 samples yeah now with these 10 you're checking and we're still on the original model we haven't gotten yeah. to the explainer yet yeah yeah we haven't got to the explainer these 10 yeah. we're checking mm -hmm. checking whether uh the uh, like how the model performs yeah and now these are the actual what is called the ground truth so you can compare the prediction versus the ground truth so you can see the first one is zero one and the uh, the actual label is also zero one so it was contrast so which is fine second one one zero one zero is fine third one here is the problem so third one the actual label is zero one so it was contrast but the the prediction is 0 0.57 0 0.53 so this will be marked as a prediction of no contrast so this is where the model got it wrong okay so because it was a little confused and it put uh, more weight on the no contrast thing, okay? And we will look at the SHAP to see if, if we can see what, what the problem is. Um, but the, the, the rest of them are good, 1010, one, zero, you know, uh, 0 0.99, which will be marked as 10, which is again 10. So all the rest are pretty much, you know, right on target. So it's the only the number three, which is a little problematic. Is that clear so far? Anybody want? I think this is the confusing part. If anybody has any questions, Ali, maybe you should pause and yeah. answer. No, just that's clear, right? Yeah, yeah, no, of course. yeah, yeah. And, and generally, like my team in, in these is let's. And this is just just me, right? Uh, like look at Shaft to look at the ones you got wrong and why you got them wrong. Like that's where kind of I've been focusing in, in these examples. But to, to your point, like if, if you want to just group a certain set of folks, you know, that's still very valid. Go ahead. Okay. So so now we can see, now we can let's look at the SHAP, the SHAP value. So what do we do? Um, so this is just looking at a particular image. I mean, uh, can you remove the, the little yeah, green the boxes there? How do I do that? Erase? Do I, what do I, do? I don't know how to remove it. Oh, it's. I can put sure. it on, but I don't know how to put it. Maybe you did it earlier. Maybe stop presenting or present again. Oh, and oh, stop presenting and re re restart it. Maybe. What do you think? To to get rid of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, they should be removable, and I can remove them. You can remove them. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't removing them just because. Uh, if you just view it with the annotate, you can hear it with the lines. Okay. But Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. I think now we're going to do the uh, explainer. So for the explainer, what we do is it's fairly simple. Now we are using what is called the gradient explainer. And so here, um, going back to uh, going back to actually this, um, you know, Ali is the thing. So you have the original model, we've trained it, we've trained the original model, and we've all, all also uh, done predictions and looked at the different predictions. Now you pass the original model into the explainer and also pass it training data. So that's what we're gonna go do right here. So that's what we're doing right now. So this is the original model, which is model 21, which we actually loaded from Pickle and, uh, and the training data set. You pass both of them into this gradient explainer and you build the explainer. So here you're just building the explainer. And this so, is where- uh, John, that, was, that was the same method in the kernel as well, right? You yeah, pass yeah. the original model into the explainer. Yeah, and okay. the training set, it's, a, it's the same. The, both gradient and kernel both have the same. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just to warn you, I'd like to say, when this comes out, this is where to build this, if this has like thousand images, this is where you will crash the system. So. 
when we went into a thousand images, at this point, there's this thing, when we try to do the explainer, it'll crash. So uh, just to give a warning to anybody who wants to try this. So um, either you will need a really large memory, you know, a very large computer, or you need, will need to make that data set smaller. Is that clear, you guys? Say, you know? Yeah. Okay. Now, now we are just going to look at now. Uh, so once you build the explainer, so you build the explainer, which is like the, you build the you full data set and you build build the explainer. Then you can ask it to explain any particular subset. Okay. And now we are looking at just the first five images. So it, I'm asking it. So give me the shape values for the first five images and, and make a plot of that. Okay. So that's what I'm telling. So shape value for the first five images. Mm -hmm. um, and um and we will do what we uh, once we once we got the shape values, we will make a plot of this. Okay. So this was uh, so the shape values are telling you which features have are important for building the prediction for the first five images. And if you remember from that, uh, the first the uh, first five images, there was the only one we got wrong was number three, okay? So we will go down here. So so the number one, we had it right and it was, the, so these labels again mean contrast and no contrast. The first one had contrast and we had predicted contrast. So the first one, um, they, we did get it wrong, right? And this now you should look at focus on this, the right, the image on the right side, and look at the red dots. So this is telling you the shaft. It is telling you the shaft. Why did I mark this contrast? All the points on the dotted red points are which are the features that made it um, made uh, this to be contrast. And Ali, do you want to say something about that? The middle thing about um it, the image is not really clear do you yeah so um, this is the same image or when when the shaft does it it this is the same image num number one this is the zero two okay hold on what was that i think you had another example where if you scroll down where it, it shows which it you know where it highlights the values the the images are a little bit more more clear i think but this is this image you know when the when this is the original image right this is the original image yeah, yeah. so but, but where you're showing the explainer it wasn't really yeah, clear where okay but explainer is telling you look in the middle so it is saying that you were saying like in the middle here is where the 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 contrast no, is um in if you scroll down okay can you keep scrolling <clears throat> keep scrolling down i think you had another is this the only explainer that we had? Did we have any other explainer? No, no, we, this is just okay. the, the, the resolution is not very well, but basically it's it's looking at like the image is not explained, it doesn't really show up well here, but basically this is the third one where it gets wrong, right? It's highlighting where, where it's using. John, can you explain what the blue versus the red is? Like what's the difference between the blue yeah, color yeah. and the red? Yeah. Um, the blue is where it says, you know, actually it's confusing. Don't look at the first column at, at all. So uh, the red means which are the features which which increase the probability that this 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 prediction came true. So forget the first column. So if you look at the um, the uh, second column, so it is saying that uh, all the features which are marked red is what made uh, this to be marked a one. Okay. And the blue, blue or is blue is usually the features which say uh, which push the probability down to zero. Okay, so it's, it's blue are the features which you are supposed to ignore. Okay, um, so but it, the 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 second column is saying that all the the red points, the red points in the middle are what are the most important things which make it to be contrast. That's what it's saying. So, and you can see that, that, get, that the, the uh, first that one there is almost or, no 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 blue blue dots at all. So basically, this zero here means it's a no contrast, and the one means it's a contrast. And I think what John is saying is like, look at just the the the, the last column, and over here, wherever there's red, that's where it's telling you that the it's using really this portion of the image, right? It's basically 
This is a version of this image, and it's saying it's using this portion of the image to determine that uh, there's contrast. So you can see the little red over here. It probably corresponds to this red area over here, right? To, to make a prediction and push it toward the one saying it's a contrast. Um, if you scroll down, if we go to the third example here, if we look at this, to use the, the red example and the blue example, it seems it's using this part of the image, right? To say that, hey, there's contrast, but it gets it wrong. And it's actually, the actual prediction it's making is that it's no contrast, right? Yeah, yeah. And the reason it gets it wrong because these other sections of the image like this and on the edges, even though there's like a little bit of contrast here, but over here, there's no contrast, right? So it's using these parts of the images to say that no, the probability, according to, to the, the Schaaf explainer, is saying that the model is using these sections of the of the image to say no, that this is no contrast, right? Because the red, basically the, the blue that that's pointing it towards no contrast is higher than the red that's pointing it towards it is contrast. So I mean it honestly, it's not like super intuitive yeah. explanation. You gotta still like dig deep into it and take a look at it. But when I, from a, from like a healthcare perspective or when you're looking at black box models for like MRI images, right? Where the model just spits out, hey, this patient has a malignant or, or benign, you know? Most of the times, like you don't even have this, right? Like it's, it's pure black box. Like the model just makes a prediction and most implementations that I'm aware of, they don't, the doctor doesn't really have an explainer to look at, right? So to me, once again, this is still, it's not really intuitive. Like looking at these reds and these blues, right? But to me, it's, it's like, is the model pointing to some ground truth, right? Like, is it pointing to something that you can look at the image, we can look at it, and we can say, yeah, that makes sense. It's using this thing. And that's probably what it should be looking at. The, the famous example is of like, like wolves and, and huskies, where, you know, if you read the literature, that they had a model where that's making a prediction between kind of wolves and huskies. And like, one species is more like in the in, in kind of snowy areas, and the backgrounds were more white. Whereas one species is in more, you know, kind of wooded areas, so the background is is more greener. And the models, when they were making predictions on those, it it didn't use the actual image of the animal. It used the image in the background, right? So one reason I was interested in this implementation of looking at image analysis is that when you're using it, you know, like I can think of in healthcare, for example, right? When you're looking at MRI images or you're helping a doctor maybe for a given type of test that hey the model is telling you a prediction that hey this patient has you know a benign or malignant you know tumor you should look at the model should look at something that represents some ground truth and it and it should give the the provider some indication that what you're looking at is probably reflective of something underneath right so to me that's why this is interesting right like yeah, this is this the model. This the give you some information. Yeah. For you to look into to further do further analysis. Yeah. yeah. Instead of like looking at the black box. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. And then we even better if somehow has the technology or the you can resolve that the feedback into the into the yeah. model and make some sort of correction out of yeah. that. Yeah. That would be even cooler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, it's, um, yeah, I mean, and this is easier because like I said, we can look at it and we can compare the, the model with the actual image, you know, and we can do comparison in cases where we had another example where it was just looking at the edges of the image and, but the accuracy was good, but it was looking at the edges of the images. We couldn't tell why, right? So it's like, okay, it's getting it right, but what's there in the edges of the image we we couldn't figure it out so i mean we we missed we skipped that example but you know if you're a provider and you're told that hey like use this result to make a prediction or use it as an assistant to help you make a prediction about a diagnosis 
with the black box models, even though in some cases they've proven to be more, more accurate. Um, you know, something like this, I think is like a really interesting add on to, to give the doctor like, hey, I'm not looking at a black box or something like you said, to look further into it. Yeah. 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 Was there anything else on the on the in terms of the uh, implementation? I think, I think the implementation is, is pretty much that this. I just want to preface saying I think this is like I said, we are still this is early stages, and we've just taken some preliminary examples, and maybe you will another talk we'll do some advanced examples. I think these are preliminary stages of understanding, I mean, of, 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 of uh, putting together human intelligence and, and machine intelligence. So the SHAP is helping you understand what the machine intelligence is telling you and whether it's intuitive or not. And maybe like this, maybe a physician can look at it and say, oh, you know, this is intuitive and the model makes sense or does not make sense. I think that's the function of the thing. So. That's, you know, I just wanted to prepare that. But uh, other than that, um, yeah, let's, uh, you know, um, Ali open up into, if there are any other questions on implementation or not? And if it, if it helps, the, the, the script uh, that, that we presented here, we can post it in the BI meetup group if you want to look at it like further and kind of have links to the, to the data set. Like I said, Iris data set comes with the package. Once you install the, the SHAP package, the iris data is part of it but these images for the for the lung we can send the the, the link for them if you want to download those and kind of play around with the with yeah the, this particular implementation yeah we can post the uh, the python notebook as well so that's not a problem yeah any other questions the shop package is uh, free open source yeah yeah right shop package is open source no, no, it's, it's free yeah, software. yeah. Everything's open source. It's on GitHub. You can look at it on GitHub. So everything is downloadable, and yeah. So it's a it's a great resource, I think. Hopefully, this is give for those people who haven't who do have never used this. Hopefully, this will give a like a jump start and you know introduction, like easy introduction to SHAP. So. Any comments or anything? Anything? Yeah, yeah. Open up. I mean, I would, I would kind of open it up if, if you guys have like use cases that you guys would think, hey, I would like to do this use case. I would, uh, not for this talk, but maybe for future talks, we yeah. can kind of take take input and and kind of mm -hmm. play around with with more use cases. These are use cases, like I said, these are simple, tabular image. Like this does not include like NLP or voice recognition. You know, uh, I haven't really looked at those like where where NLP could be implemented using SHAP or, or with, with voice data, how it, could, how it could be implemented. But even within tablet or image data, any use cases, future talk ideas would be, would be know, interesting. Use cases, but the, the one, you know, was the fraud detection. Mm. So we can go a class for example, though, but there's something a lot of time with the wildcat and everything is the wrong prediction. Mm. Like which features are 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 we looking at? Are we really looking at the right exactly. features? Like I said, we somehow it could be the result of this the shaft and things that happen to you with modern training and maybe smarter. Yeah. Hmm. What was the comment, Ali? Can you repeat that? Oh, sorry. No, the 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 use case that um, like a potential use case we're talking about was uh, around around like fraud detection. Hmm. And uh, if you if you kind of make a prediction, the model makes a prediction, and uh, you know, let's say it gets it wrong, or uh, you mm -hmm. know, we can look at the features and why it got it wrong. And if and I think this is the second time you mentioned like, is there a way to kind of feed that back in? Mm. to the model to make it make it make it smarter so it knows that hey you know yeah. like i'm looking at these features you know these aren't the features i should be looking at for this category of, of samples mm -hmm. you know the features mm -hmm. these features that i'm used to aren't 
don't make the better prediction. So how, I mean, how you would do that and, and right. at least explore. Right. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. I, I think something we can explore in another talk. And if they have particular data sets or something, they should post it to the group. Maybe we can look at it, you know, or get a, explore something. Yeah. Cool. Well, that will Very good. end it. Thank you, guys. Well, thank Appreciate you very it. Much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Janu. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, so, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, I hope that was useful. Thanks a lot. I enjoyed it. Okay. Thank you guys. Okay. Bye.